Pole position, your own slag hacker. He's on pole for each race here at Brands, but he's got to make a better start than he did first time around. Race one yesterday really cost him a chance of a win because of a bad start. Scott Malvin, now 14 times a race winner this year, lines up with him on the outside of row one of the grid. The second row, Jeff Urain and Nick McBride. 18 minutes, about to get underway. The lights go out. Malvin makes a very good start, possibly two good lights up the tyres. But I reckon he was moving even before the lights went out. So Scott Malvin leads, going into Paddock Hill Bend. Slackhecker second on, and that is Malvin defending from Slackhecker. Through Druids they go. Down now towards Graham Hill Bend. Scott Malvin leads the way, and he's about to be given a drive through penalty for a jump start. Scott Malvin is going to be given a drive through. Your own Slackhecker is behind him, but in a sense doesn't have to worry about overtaking now. That's going to be done for him when Malvin peels into the pit lane to serve the penalty. It looks a good start. The stewards say it's too good a start. And Scott Malvin then will get a drive-through penalty board this time when he comes past the pits. He's got three laps in which to respond to it. Here he comes now, up over the line. You can see in the distance a black flag. There it is, the drive-through penalty board is there. That says you've got to come in. And Slagkecker tries to go around the outside. I wonder whether he even saw the board. He's going to be rather busy attacking Malvin as they go through Paddock. Malvin goes wide. This is Slagkecker's chance going up towards Druids. He's going to go through. Is he? Yes, he is. He's done it. Never mind the penalty, your own Slackhecker works away by. Malvin ran wide, and that's given your own Slackhecker now the race lead as they come into Graham Hill Bend. Can the Dutchman score a second win of the season? The opposition doesn't come from Malvin anymore because he's got that penalty. The opposition is going to be from Jeff Urain further back. There's the white and blue car run by JTR, Nick Tandy's team. And as they go now through McLaren up towards Clearways, Urain has got to try and set off after the leader because Scott Malvin bails out of second place. Down the pit lane he comes. There's the team waving Malvin past them, reminding him to stay at the pit lane speed limit, otherwise there'll be another penalty heading his way. So back into the race he goes, but that was the reason for the penalty. A discernible false start as it's termed a jump start by Scott Malvin. The drive-through puts him back to last place. There's Antti Bury looking for a way past Nick McBride. McBride, whose car got airborne in the first race of the weekend, and that really did him a power of no good. Antti Bury challenging on the inside. He's going to go through at the hairpin, he's done it. The Finn picks up a place. Nick McBride looking a little bit off the pace this weekend. It's not his regular race car, it's a spare, seeing that he crashed his own in testing. And I just wonder whether it's 100% to his liking. It doesn't seem to be going as well as normal in Nick's hands. There's the replay of the Cabo racing car in the hands of Antti Bury, diving up on the inside into Druids. And the Finn, Scandinavian champion, gains the place. You're riding with Stukely, he's riding the kerb as well. Coming now out of Graham Hill Bend. To Cooper straight now. What can he do about the Magal ahead of him? Nick McBride, it is that he's closing on through into Clark Kerr and right into the back of McBride. He goes punctured tire for Nick McBride, but that car just never seemed to pick up coming out of the corner. Stutley all of a sudden found himself in the back of Nick McBride. There was nothing he could do to avoid it, almost as though McBride's car missed a gear or cut out or something. But Linton Stutley's out of the race. Here's the replay. McBride tries to get back on the power, he just goes nowhere, that car, it's as though he's heading for the pit lane. He gets a whack in the back. For the last three years, Neil Alvarico, new to Formula Ford in this country this year, he's been learning about new circuits, learning about the team, learning about the car. He's under pressure, look, here comes Leic on the inside, he's level with him, or is he? No, there's contact off, goes Alvarico, broken suspension, race over. Gets fired off to the outside of the road. Philip Leac committed to the inside line. When they got to the braking area, Alvarico tried to move across and he was pretty much ahead, wasn't he, given that it's the rear of his car that's taken the damage rather than the front. He's got away very, very lightly with that. And that is Jeff Urain. The man that was second has spun. He's facing the wrong way. He's on the edge of the circuit. But what's happening? He's not going anywhere. The engine's running. And now it's not. What's happened to Urain? Comes through Clark, goes for a gear, spins. And it's almost like he's got a gearbox problem, but when he went for a gear, the gearbox suddenly had this issue with him, pitched him into the spin. Now he can't get a gear to get the car going again. And you can see the severity of that spin, the suddenness of it, given the tyre marks that are there. So Jeff Urain, who was on target to be second, he's going nowhere, and it means that your own Slackhecker is going to come through for a second win of the season. Goes across the line, flag out just in the nick of time for him. Slackhecker wins dominantly. It's going to be Dan Dezil for JTR that comes home in second. And Antti Bury, another third place. 
but all of that shuffles around right at the very end with Jeff Urain spinning out and Luke Williams in his first race after his massive accident at Alton Park at the start of the year comes home in fourth place Mike Goddard fifth and Matt Parry in the Van Diemen sixth so from 88 thousandths behind in race one to eight seconds ahead Urain Slagacker wins for the second time in the championship this year Brazil second and Tiberi third once again so as the Jamin Racing team celebrates here at Brands Hatch, top step of the podium for your own slag <laughs>